The Goat House is back with trades we would love to see happen by the NFL trade deadline. Some of these are very realistic. Some are possible and some make sense, but maybe are a little bit more of a wishful thinking or a long shot here. We'll have a lot of predictions and trade deadline coverage leading up to it. Hopefully you can join us for that. Let's take a look at these trade scenarios. Starting with a very realistic one here, one we touched on in our recent Devonta Adams trades video. Check that out. But Devonta Adams to the Jets, which we know is a possibility for a third and a sixth round pick. Yes, the Raiders are looking for a second round pick. The, the Jets could possibly trade that. I do think a third and a sixth is a little more likely. People around the league expecting it to be less than a second at the end of the day. So I thought this made a lot of sense. The Jets have an extra pick in that third round as well. Uh, so that is pretty big. So this is one uh, I am actually expecting to happen, but he could possibly go to the Saints or the Steelers. The Bills on our team, we had a full video on this. You can check it out. It is on the channel. My favorite trade for Hassan Reddick would be sending him to the Arizona Cardinals with Jonathan Gannon, who was his defensive coordinator during his career year with the Eagles. Maybe the Jets are a little more likely to trade him if they acquire Devontae Adams. Maybe that doesn't matter at all, but if they're trading away picks for one player, could make some sense here. The issue with trading for Hassan Reddick is his attitude right now. And I mean, even his agency just fired him, which is kind of wild. Usually it's the other way around and he needs more money. And it almost sounds like it's unrealistic on what he's looking for. So would the Cardinals or whoever is acquiring him be willing to do that? So I actually think while it's increasing, the chances of the Jets trading away is increasing. Maybe it's decreasing of a team trading for him because will he actually play for that team? Uh, possibly, the, those chances could increase again if it's dirt cheap. Now, the, the Jets don't want to give him away. They traded a future third-round pick for him. I don't think they're going to get a third-round pick back, but it is a 2026 third-round pick that it can turn into. So a fourth-round pick now actually could hold some more value or equal value there. So, again, this video necessarily isn't predictions, even though I do think the Cardinals are a landing spot. It's more of what we want to see and him going to somewhere where we know he fits under Jonathan Ginn. And Cardinals look legit right now. You know, they have some tough losses, but not the greatest record, but they just beat the Niners last week. They're sneaky, and they're only going to get better. What are they lacking most? edge they don't have a pass rush especially with B.J. Ajilari getting hurt before the season started so adding a big time guy can make them up up serious uh, playoff contender perhaps so that that's for all those reasons that's why this one made some sense here tough figuring out the, the compensation here I don't think anyone anyone's going to throw a third round pick given the situation given the leverage fourth round pick could even be cheaper but that in that case you know, the Jets are going to be going god we trade much more a way to get him and he hasn't played for us yet do we accept this so that's the tricky part there but a, a big player to watch as we lead up to the trade deadline how about a deandre hopkins scenario which is pretty realistic he can end up going to the chiefs i thought about the ravens the steelers they might be looking for someone that could be a, a part of the long-term plans though uh, but the chiefs were actually very interested in deandre hopkins before he went to the titans so i thought this was realistic at the same time of would be a splash move with which this video is all about uh, things we want to see happen or would be cool if we see we saw it happen. The Titans, believe it or not, aren't playing him full amount of snaps. He did have an injury going into the year, so that could be why, but Titans are also losing a lot of games, right? It's going to depend on how many games they win or lose leading up to the deadline, uh, but they could kind of be saving him a as a potential trade piece. He does have a little bit pricey of a contract for this year. It's not super pricey, but... Uh, it's going to be tough for some teams to afford him. That drops his value down a little bit. So a fourth round pick made some sense. Is it worth it for the Titans? I don't know if they're going to re-sign him. I don't know if he's going to because he's got a one year deal left. It's an expiring deal. So that the fourth round pick would make some sense here. It would be something if, if the Chiefs finally got a big name receiver once again for Patrick Mahomes. And given you know the injuries to that group, they definitely could use one as well. They also could stay put and just wait till Hollywood Brown comes back. Different style receiver, but. We will see. I'd love to see him on the Ravens too, but I've kind of given up on the Ravens added re adding receivers here. But uh, the Chiefs would make some sense. At the same time, it would be a splash, you know, a cool move here. Definitely a big name to watch as we uh, approach the deadline. Make sure to subscribe and turn notifications on. We have weekly NFL coverage, weekly pick shows, a lot of fun, and we have a lot more where that came from. So appreciate it if you guys could join us. Uh, but Bryce Young, how about if he got dealt? I think my favorite landing spot would be the Miami Dolphins, having an Alabama, former Alabama quarterback with Tua that he can learn behind. A good guy to learn behind, right? And the Dolphins could use a guy for the future because if 
Tua gets injured again, you know, whether it's this year, next year, the year after, I mean, that could could be the final straw. So having a guy that you can develop, uh, and I think it would be a really good system, you know, not as long as he doesn't go in right away, and he wouldn't, I, I wouldn't imagine. Uh, and then having another Alabama guy in Jalen Waddle out there as well, I mean, just isn't a huge deal, but I, it, just, it just makes you feel a little bit better about the connection, you know, the fit, uh, just being in that system that should get the most out of quarterbacks with the, with the skill set that Bryce Young still has in there. So that would be uh, one of my favorite landing spots for him, one of them I'm kind of pulling for if he were to be traded. I uh, think the Pan- that's a tricky part. The Panthers wouldn't give him away. A fifth and a seventh makes sense. A fourth, I don't think a team's trading from a guy that just got benched and it hasn't looked good yet. No one's going to deal a fourth-round pick where you can get a starter uh, you know, immediate starter as a rookie, whether it's a receiver, offensive lineman, we see it at a running back, we see it every single year. So a fifth and a seven makes sense. The question would be that would the Panthers do it? I think maybe with, with uh, having two picks there, a fifth and a seventh. But yeah, that would be my favorite landing spot. You know, people talk about the Steelers. I think that's possible as well. Uh, the Dolphins, the most appealing for me. So that's what I went with in this video. Again, we'll have like actual predictions and uh, legit landings, but we do plenty of those. We'll do plenty of them when the time is right. It's a, kind of a fun video here at this one. Amari Cooper is a legit trade candidate. We could see him go to a team like the Chiefs have been mentioned. Do they want to go for that big of a guy? He is on the cheaper side in terms of his contract, for, but it's an expiring contract. How about going back to the Dallas Cowboys? That would be something. They trade him away. They get him back now. They definitely could use another receiver with uh, you know getting C.D. Lamb help and then with Brandon Cooks having that freak uh, injury, that infection type deal he's got going. I know Tolbert stepped up a little bit recently, but definitely could use another guy. And their issue, why they were, they were possibly in on Devontae Adams, but then they said, nope, it's because they just spent a lot of money on C.D. Lamb. That was the reasoning there, and that made sense, right? But... Amari Cooper, his contract was restructured this offseason, so he is a he is dirt cheap for an acquiring team. There's a reason the Browns did that. Well, it was to clear money now, push money down the road, but to make that contract much more acquirable for for uh, another team. So he would not be expensive, and they would not be tied to long-term future in terms of a future contract here. So that seems like the perfect type of player for the Cowboys. So I don't know if there's any bad blood there. I don't think so, but... So that's why, you know, they traded him away for next to nothing, but now he, he was very expensive then. Now he is dirt cheap. So it makes some sense. Like a fourth round pick somewhere around there. Sometimes lately, guys, good, good players go for a lot less than expected. So could guys like Hopkins and Cooper go for a fifth round pick? You definitely cannot rule that out. Uh, and you could argue maybe a little more likely the Chiefs. Uh, this one would be a lot of fun. I think we would all like to see this again and see how it would work if he ends up going back there because. It's a really good receiver that we're not really seeing his full uh, talent, his skill right now, just because the issues with the Cleveland Browns, if they continue to lose, they will definitely be sellers more than just Amari Cooper. But there's also a chance they kind of sort of turn this thing around right now. They could get Chubb back very soon. So we'll have to wait and see, but definitely could be sellers at the deadline. And the Cowboys could be buyers as long as those contracts are cheap. And Cooper is actually a cheap one because of that recent restructure. Now let's get into some trades where it's another step up, like a little bit more of a long shot, but it kind of makes sense, and we're kind of more of wishful thinking, but Travis Etienne, there's been some rumors about it. There's been some rumors, even before last week, where Bigsby went off. Well, Bigsby kind of went off the week before, too, that, uh, you know, if the it probably depends on the Jags' record is around the deadline. I think they could turn it on here, on here soon. They have a London game this week. Uh, they'll have two in a row, actually. But Bigsby looking better than Etienne. I don't actually think he's better, but he's looking better, and they could look to add picks there. The Vikings do have Aaron Jones, but he is currently week to week. And how much do you trust him to stay healthy all year? He was running well in that game. He got injured against the Jets, but then got injured. Ty Chandler comes in. He's been a good backup, but you could see once he came in, they couldn't run the ball anymore. He's not an every down back, right? And the Vikings are better than everyone expected, maybe better than they thought. So they're a legit team right now. They want to make this team as good as they possibly could make it. ETN in that offense would be scary good. They're all putting the Cowboys up there. The Niners dealing with, you know, McCaffrey might be out longer. Now Mason injured. Thought about them as well. The Vikings would be a perfect fit. Would love to see that one. Uh, trade compensation tough. Second round might feel a little rich for a running back, but the Vikings do not have a second round pick this year. So 2026 second or so it, it could be a, they don't have a third. Either the Jags actually have their third coincidence there, but could it be a future third in a this year fifth possibly but he does have two years left in his deal this year and next year and they're very very affordable for a really good young running back that doesn't you know that's still got a lot of good play in him I think that's 
he's a pretty valuable running back in my in my opinion. But uh, so that would be something. Yeah, maybe a little rich for a running back, but the Vikings it helps them make that run that they now believe that they can make. And again, would be dynamic. I think electrifying in that offense. The offense line's getting better. Teams are kind of fearing the pass with them. He could be a factor on the ground and through the air. So uh, that would be a fun one for sure, but maybe a little bit more of a, a, you know unlikely than compared to the rest, but I wasn't just going to throw any random stupid trade up here. You know, it had, to have, it had to make some sense. There's been some rumors about ETN. Vikings are legit. Their running back went down. He's week to week. Uh, maybe a little more. Maybe a, if Jones was out for the year, this would be a lot more likely, I think. I think it'd be a little more desperate, even though it's traded for ETN. I don't know how much of a desperation move that is, but it would be a lot of fun here for sure. And now we're taking another step up here, one that's a little bit more of a long shot, but looks good, makes sense, and I think people would like to see it happen. I think a few weeks ago, this was more realistic. The issue right now is the Bears really don't want to trade DJ Moore. That's the issue. And this video, again, isn't predictions. But if they were to, and if there were to be a team interested, this trade would make sense. And why I say a few weeks ago maybe it would have made more sense is because DJ Moore and Caleb Williams were not on the same page. DJ Moore, who's a really a relaxed, like, chill guy, that's how I always viewed him, was really frustrated and showing that frustration uh, with the... With, uh, just not getting the ball, you know, balls not not being accurate enough and just being frustrated with Caleb Williams. So that was a thing until last week where he went off in the revenge game against uh, his former team, the Carolina Panthers. So maybe they figured something out. You, you knew it was going to happen at some point, but... Again, if they gotta go back to what was happening before the Panthers game, hey, maybe there's a chance. And I thought it was interesting that this offseason, he was pounding the table for keeping Justin Fields. He was a big Justin Fields guy. You know, with him as his quarterback on the Bears, he was very productive with him. And Fields wasn't the most productive passer, but he was him and DJ Moore were still something. They were a connection. Of course, just Justin Fields is on the Steelers and playing a little bit better than expected right now. They are badly in need of a receiver. They are searching for a receiver, and they really wanted Ayuk. And this is this kind of falls under that category where it's a good receiver now that also could help you in the future. So I, I 100% think the Steelers would be interested. I think his value would be around a second and a third. You could argue either way, like a second and a third, second and a fourth, or you can second, third, and something else. I don't think anyone would trade a first-round pick. That's the issue. I don't, the Bears really don't want to trade him because Keenan Allen's not going to be around next year. So the duo is going to be more in a Dunze, and that's, uh, that's a pretty damn good duo there if they're sticking around. So they really don't want it to happen. But if you get a lot more, I don't think we're going to get it, but if you get a lot more of those you know, visible frustrations from DJ Moore with his new quarterback, uh, then maybe, right? But it looks like it's heading in the right direction. We'll see if what happens post-Panthers game. But if that's what made me think of it. You know, the frustration and the Steelers and Justin Fields being there. So this is a fun one, perfect for this video. Again, not necessarily predictions. We do plenty of predictions. We'll do more. And we typically predict, around the trade deadline, predict a lot right. Um, not counting on this one because the Bears, again, I don't think they want to trade them. We'll see what happens going forward here. But, um, yeah, w would be for sure an interesting one, a blockbuster one here. If we're talking wild trades, we have to throw this one in here, and I'm not the first one to mention this at all. Once the Chiefs receivers start, started going down and once Tua went down and Tyreek Hill not you know, not involved nearly enough without Tua, uh, this was definitely being brought up or, you know, around. Everyone knew it was kind of a long shot, but you knew that the Chiefs could have some interest. And then, hey, maybe if the Dolphins don't want Tua to come back and they're kind of shutting down shop, which I don't think is the case. I think he's going to come back after the bye. But uh, then it was possible, I suppose. But just fun to think about. Again, a definitely a long shot at this point. Uh, Tyreek Hill, to me, is worth the first and second round pick. The Chiefs got more for him, but that was a few years ago. And the issue, actually, with which could bring his trade value down is he's kind of hinted at not playing for a long time. He's going to finish out this contract and then he actually could retire early. So that could actually, that thought could kind of bring his value down a little bit, but he's still one of the better players in football. Uh, and then would make the chiefs the, they probably already are the team, but the team to beat and make them that much more dangerous and get Mahomes playing, even though he's already playing just fine. He was playing at elite, the best level without him, but even better. And I think it would make uh, both both sides happy. Well, Hill and the Chiefs happy, but the Dolphins really don't want to trade him. But if they kind of feel they're not competing right now and they go, hey, that's the big thing here. Again, kind of going back to him hinting at, 
at the end of his contract, maybe a little before, maybe a little after, he could retire early. So if the Dolphins kind of get wind of that, if they kind of feel, all right, we could actually get some good value here for a guy that is really going to only help us, but help us a lot for the next couple of years. That could spark something for the Dolphins here. But again, it's at the end of this video uh, because I do think it's more of a long shot, but it's one we all would be going nuts about for sure. And that's what this video was about. So most definitely not predicting this one. I am predicting the Devontae Adams and the Jets one that was in a video with predictions. Uh, I do love the Reddick to Cardinals fit. I think there's a lot of complications there, though. The Jets don't want to trade him for less than what they they gave up for him, and teams don't want him unless he is guaranteed 100% going to play for them and no BS, right? I think Hopkins, very realistic once we get to the deadline. Watch out. I mentioned some couple couple teams there. Chiefs could be one. I guess it depends on how how they play, how their current receivers play up in that deadline because till that deadline because again Hollywood Brown will come back so maybe they feel like they don't need one I mean they played great against the Saints they couldn't really get in the end zone enough I suppose well, enough to win but more than they want as much as they wanted to I should say so uh Bryce Young I think is possible the tricky part is the Panthers don't want to give him away and teams aren't giving a ton up for a guy that just got benched and has not looked good yet they're kind of taking a, a gamble a shot in the dark on him so um Amari Cooper definitely could be dealt if it was a predictions video, Cooper, I do think the Cowboys are possible. Uh, Chiefs, talked about the Chiefs. It, it, teams are going to wait till the deadline for several reasons. They want to make sure they know what they need most. Uh, at, you know, they, they don't want to jump on something too early right now. What if a receiver develops, gets better right now? Or what if they have another catastrophic injury that is more important for them to add at? And... Their contracts, their salary are che- is going to be cheaper around the deadline, so they're very, you know, much more affo- affordable. So that is the reason teams, for the most part, I do think Devonte Adams will happen much before the deadline. I think they'll talk from Antonio Pierce like, "Hey, he's a Raider." I think it's they're trying to gain some leverage back because they know teams aren't offering what they want. That's really all that is. So. We'll monitor everything. We'll have rumors, candidates, predict landing spots, predictions, videos. We always get some right, especially around the trade deadline. We'll have that a little closer. Loads of content every single week, so join us for all that. Check out our pick show, score predictions, video, power rankings, and much more. Like, subscribe to notifications on Twitter. Follow that. Link pin in the comments. Going to do it. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.